This is going to be weird. Any competition trying to copy us, watch these videos, kick rocks, fella. Look at this pinion. Oh, what was that? No, there's going to be different camera years of unusable footage on this. Years, I'm talking years. You wouldn't believe. Boom, we're at the start of the first video. What am I doing? My name's Ben. I'm a design engineer at CNC Labs. I'm working on the 4x8 project. When I say the 4x8 machine, I mean the four foot wide by eight foot long alt mill that can cut a four by eight sheet of plywood. What is an alt mill? An alt mill is a router table, a CNC router table, computer numeric controlled that can cut out wood or other materials like aluminum that doesn't cost $50,000. Uh, an alt mill is a router table that costs like four and a half thousand dollars. In episode one, I'm working towards putting together the prototype for the rack and pinion to prove that this setup has the correct amount of rigidity and accuracy uh, and backlash so that we can move forward and implement it on the machine as opposed to just a prototype bench top unit. Got a to-do list of things. First thing I wanted to do, right. I'm gonna be honest, I can't focus with you around. I can't. Now I know I've just begun, but I can't focus. This is the current prototype. Holes. Holes. I wanna put these holes here. Why? I'll explain it later. Johan, you know where the edge finder is? Ah, sweet. Mm. Well, probably got to buy another one, but it's good for now. Oh, I wish there was a control Z button. I just moved it, but I forgot to press Z zero, and now I just wish I could press control Z and I'd move back to exactly the last step I just did. Well, how much did you move it by? I have no clue, I just moved it. It's okay, what I'll do is zero it via sticking this in the hole. There we go. Hey, uh, so did you enjoy interviewing the guy today? Yeah, it was a blast. Uh, I think I'd do better next time no. by just shortening it by half the amount. You know, <laughs> it's like, Obviously, I wasn't gonna like go and interrupt you, but after a while, I was like, man, I feel like this Ben guy's just chatting at this point. No, I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just chatting. What was that? my little setup that I've made to prototype the rack and pinion and test rigidity, test accuracy, um, and, uh, um, just the whole, the whole system. I know I only said two things because it's hard to think, but there's a lot more going on. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, yesterday the camera died, so this is turning into a pretty annoying thing, but uh, it's actually going to be a lot of fun. This is a spacer I made yesterday to offset from the lip of the Y rail, which is going to butt up against this part here, this side. And then the rack is going to sit in on this. I'm going to cut 10 holes. 
I'm gonna cut this into 10 pieces. Right now the rack is on the face. Obviously it's clamped to it. So I'm gonna lift that up so that it's closer to the Y gantry plate. Yeah, it sure isn't perfect, but it's uh, good enough for what we're doing. Ah, you gotta think of what speed. This is a cold coffee. This, hot coffee. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. Absolutely gorgeous day. There's Chase, handsome fella. <laughs> no, that's you. That could be both of us. Yeah. Are you a smart fella or a fart smeller? Nice. Put more tension on the spring so it doesn't come down as hard. The way you do that is by turning this. You probably can't even see what I'm turning. Yeah, you can see, but you probably can't see uh, that these lines are a little bit thinner than these lines, and that's because I adjusted the tension on the spring, so it's not coming down with as much force, and it gets a nicer cut. It also doesn't cut on so much of an angle, it kind of pushes off to the side because uh, it's just, you know, Adam Boko's saw. I love this stuff, oil. Oh yeah, you can totally tell. Look at where I, uh, Started putting the oil in. That's pre-oil. Now you start putting the oil on. Look at that, look at that surface finish. Much nicer. This John here, I'm holding it on is sort of a split clamp method where I've got this M4 screw, goes through the shaft, is threaded on the bottom. And you see the thread sticking out a bit. So what I need to do is drill a new hole through the shaft and move this all the way back because um, it's going to be stronger that way. Extremely epic stuff. With everything you missed because the camera was filled with uh, memory, move this pinion so that it's all the way close to uh, butt it up against the shaft collar of this uh, bevel gear reducer. Moved the rack so that it is as close to the swing arm as possible. What that does is it uh, reduces the moment arm, the distance from the force that the pinion sees when transferring load from the rack to the pinion. The shorter the distance, if I were to push here compared to here, I'm going to be able to push the same amount of distance and affect those bearings more if I'm pushing down here. So I've moved the rack all the way up with these little DIY spacers. The effect is a rather rigid piece of material right now. Boy, you wouldn't believe just how rigid this stuff is. So it's got low backlash and it's uh, real rigid. What we're gonna do, test the 300 Newtons. When it beeps, when the little machine goes ping, that's when it hits 300 newtons. So just listen for that. Okay, I'm moving the table. Let's get it right at zero. We're just gonna have people talking trash. Don't want that. Zero. So it's just over 2,000, which is solid. 
Now, pushing the other way, you can see it's back at zero. So what you can see here is we have one thou of backlash and can definitely be dealt with on the software side of things with some backlash compensation. Rack and pinion, one thou of backlash. I'll do the math for what the rigidity is. We're, it's funny because we're mixing metric newtons and imperial thou. So this is a huge success. What this means is that this setup has hit our goals more or less and it's only going to get better as we put this prototype design that looks like this and turn it into sort of the genuine polished design, moving it towards a production ready machine. Because this is prototyping, this is just screwing around, you know. I made all these parts on the mill. I did all this machining, the boring of these holes. It's good, it's just, a, it's not a professional shop that's done it. So what that means it's just only gonna get better. We are CNC Labs the building I'm in. This project is showing the 4x8 being built. So I hope you enjoy the videos. I hope you continue watching them. I'm going to make them sort of regardless. And uh, yeah, it'll really be a, a cool document by the end of it.